Why is that on full screen in my iPad? Oh, the that camera's not working on the Hello, everybody. Welcome to Turning with Terry on Monday. You haven't seen me for a little while, and you probably won't be seeing me for another little while in the future. Just to let everybody know, I am at the moment awaiting an operation on my back. Well, I've trapped nerves and I can hardly stand. So I should be doing as much as I can today. And Pete Twisted Trees will be helping me out if I have to have a sit down. Also, you may be surprised, in fact, you will be really surprised to know that Mark the Gentleman Wood Turner will be returning to live shows on Monday at one o'clock. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, uh, uh -huh. Wednesday at one o'clock. <laughs> my, my Freudian slip there. <laughs> Wednesdays at one. Wednesdays at one o'clock, starting this Wednesday. So if you're all about, then that's fine. And I'll just bring in my earworms. I want to get this mouse to work properly. Uh, there they are. So we, today, like we, we, have, today we have. Um, <laughs> well, we didn't talk about that for ages beforehand. No. Today we got Pete Twisted Trees. Hi everyone. Brian from Mark Returning. Good afternoon, everybody. And Mark, the gentleman returner. Hi everybody. We'll be entertaining you today. Okay, so I'll just slip them into no the pressure. Then. No pressure. Not, not so sure about entertaining, but no more. And, right, so today on said lathe, we have a piece of uh, cedar. Hopefully. Very nice piece of cedar. A very nice piece of cedar. It is, it is currently three inches across by, or three inches deep by ten and a half. And then do that way so you can see it. Ten and a half diameter. Now we're going to make a bowl. I made a bowl for ages actually. So while I do that, one of the reprobates will read out the chat, and I'll try and square this thing up. Mark's going to read out the chat. Yeah, oh, he's a reprobate. So. Yeah, he's back on Wednesday. Didn't well, only, tell you that? He's, he's the only he's the only reprobate amongst us. So anybody tell you Mark's back on Wednesday? Mm. Mark's back on Wednesday. Did you know that? That's, that's it. I thought it was Monday. No, it's not. Well, it could be Monday. Actually, he's going well, to alternate. Wednesdays, for Terry at some stage. Wednesdays yeah. and Mondays between Pete and him. No, it's not Mondays. Don't confuse people. It's Wednesdays. <laughs> right. So you, from the chat. You, you, but you'll Josh, be doing the odd Monday, covering for Terry. No, I won't be doing the odd Monday. Oh, you will be. Oh, you will no, be. I I'll I'll right. Back there. right. So we've got in the chat Michael McEwen, Roger Kent, Clive Rogerson, Brian El Tornio de Medera, Brian the Boy. Copper Al Wood Turning, Doug Miller, which was one round, uh, Terry Bartlett, Gerard the French Turner, Chris Dodds, Ruby Claire, hello Ruby, kiss kiss. Oh god you crawler. <laughs> you got this. She's the boss. Eric Winkler. Um, David J. Heath, Todd Glen Cove, Michelle Higgins, Norman Greenwell, um, did I say Paul Hewton? Nope, you just well, did, Paul now. Hewton. You did now, did now. Uh, Yorkshire Kids live the from the Isle Man. Also, we're from the Isle Man. Steve Madden, yeah, right the Wood Dude. That was a Wood Dude. Uh, keep going. This is a slow way doing it this way, but it does get everyone. I'm at the bottom of the list now. Oh, I want to make stuff. And yes, that's it. Everybody I can see, I've read out. Hello and welcome along. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome Hello. along. Greetings and salutations. So, 34 people watching, can't we? Welcome aboard, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Lovely to see you all. Just trying to square this piece up because it's well off. So it's got a heavy part on it, so it's... Yeah, that's the difference between the hot wood and the sub wood, isn't it, Terry? Yeah. You can see it. Currently, we're going to get... Get really lovely big shavings off cedar. 
And you get a thousand revs out of it by the look of it. Yeah, you also get CJ that explodes quite a lot. He does. That's, oh. Yeah. It's quite spectacular when it goes. Yeah. I'm not well, it's on a wood worm screw, so you never know. No, he's just shattered, isn't it? Is it? Joe. Joe is also Hi, over the Isle of Wight at the moment. That's the Isle of Man. Yeah. Different places, too. She's there to make sure that Glenn doesn't buy any new motorcycles. And She's bought one, hasn't he? Glenn, Glenn took Joe so he can drink a lot. If Joe, if Joe says, who's singing then? Well, that'll be Mark. No, he won't. It'll be Mark singing today. That's what yeah, I said. Joe. It'll be Joe. Joe will be singing anyway. We'll play a recording of Joe singing. Could do, couldn't we? Roy the boys in. Good afternoon, Roy. Managed to get 1,100 revs out of it at the moment. Oh, you're flying. Yeah, that's probably enough. Your name's not Jimmy Clues. Sure enough, cutting 100 again, see? I'm trying to stop the shames at me, you know? Yeah, see, I've got his thumb on him. Try and get a nice shape here. Is that a 3 8 ball gauge or a half inch? 3 8. Chris Dodds has got a question. He said, Terry, when you fix your back, will that make you an even taller hobbit? Uh, probably shorter, won't it? Shorter, I reckon, yeah. No, Joe's asking if this is going to be a bowl. No, Joe, no. it's going to be a candlestick. Pepper mill. <laughs> Pepper mill. Pepper mill. Poor Joe. <laughs> Poor Joe. Joe's in it already. She's not here, so I can we can say what we like. Right. Yeah, but she can still move you up the list. Well, she can't. You're already at the no, top. No, she can't. How can <laughs> I move up the list? Can't move up the list when you get to the top. But I bet she's typing right now. She's typing, "Watch it, Beckett." Oh no! Ha oh, ha! Funny Beckett. You were close. Same thing. Um, I PM's afternoon, that's right. I did actually mean to say earlier, Terry, I completely forgot. I'm going to have to leave at quarter past two. Quarter past two? That's okay. Yeah, I've got my diabetic review. I missed it the last time, they got a bit angry. What, today? Yeah. Did, did they get angry? Yeah. Okay. Was the bit. There was shouting involved. Oh, dear. That's not good. <laughs> Never met my sharp. diabetic nurse. She's a demon. You need a sharp gauge now. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. This is here. Stephen said, sharp tools and light cuts with cedar. And of yeah. course, an unimpeded exit strategy. Yeah. Bucking's <laughs> cool. Right. I don't know if all cedars are the same, but uh, the cedars we get over here, they have very long, very heavy branches. Which means that they get uh, probably a good 10 foot of compression, which sometimes just um, springs back into its um, uncompressed state halfway through turning it. Is, is cedar a quick growing tree? I think it is when it has Very white quick. green. Yeah, it's quick. Yeah. I, why have I not planted any cedar trees over here then? I don't why know, because they're beautiful trees. Yeah, I think I must, I must look into that. I think I have don't space for a couple of cedar. I don't think, in all honesty, they do very well in Ireland because they have a very low, uh, uh, not low, shallow root system. They don't do well in high winds. No, I can. Well, I've got a nice shelter spot I can stick a couple in down at the bottom of the hill, <coughs> the leeward side of the hill. Right. Cedar. Oh, yeah. I have to look that up. Where am I going to buy cedar trees? Red cedar. The only trouble with turning cedar in my workshop is I find that uh, the smell is so strong it'll be about three days before I can come back into the shop again. 62. Does it, well, it, why, it does it smell bad? It? Does it smell it smells bad? lovely, but when you get right. a concentrated amount of it, it becomes okay. overwhelming. Oh. 
going to do that. Let's take the tail stock away, eh? Get there somewhere. Don't touch the edge, Terry. We'll do. I'm actually making a pot pourri type thing. Mm -hmm. Grab some of the shavings and chuck it in there. That's that's um. It's pretty good then, isn't it? Yeah. About as good as it gets, really. Oil on top when it when it kind of dies off a bit. Stephen says he's chainsawing some red cheddar the, uh, this week for pieces. He loves right. the smell. It is nice. Yeah, I love the smell. Just as I said, it gets concentrated in the workshop when you work a piece. Mm. And uh, it gets overpowering. <laughs> Todd, Todd says he, he once did some flat work with... Uh, uh, aromatic cedar, and every time he turned uh, turned on the shop back afterwards, he got a very pleasant smell. Must have embedded itself into the filter. Yeah, it's probably. Yeah, it's it's really nice, but it can just get a bit overpowering after a, a while. Never turned it, so I'm going to have to try and acquire a piece. Yeah, you oh, should. Sure. Or oh, Terry, is that the Carwin Way signature scheme? Oh, yeah, did I mention I got one of those? You've got oh, two now, Mark, have you? Oh, you've got two, 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 yes, yeah. Of course, you had Next. to buy another one because oh. your friend Carwin came round, didn't he? Oh. Hey? <laughs> your friend Carwin came round, creep, 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 didn't he? <laughs> you got that. Well, sorry, I fell asleep then. I forgot to get him to sign the lathe as well. <laughs> He's dead now. Sorry, he can do that the next time he comes over. you got to get him to sign the lathe, I love it. Right. Told you you were turning out there, woman. Told you that. Shut up. <laughs> the best smelling wood I ever turned is Monterey pine. It smells like lemons for days. Yeah. Hey, aren't they? Monterey pine smells like lemons. You would think that Monterey pine would smell like pine, but no more. Monterey, even. Yosha gets says, Hi, Lewis. This is Joe. My internet dropped. Oops. You hear my dogs? Yeah. That's Michelle has just arrived home. Oh, from the, stand by your from beds, everybody. The, from the shopping. Better get the kettle on, then. So, so, do I have to get up and go and help her in with the shopping, or will I just sit here? What do you think? Uh, oh, you're busy. You tell her that the badge has told her to stay, uh, empty the shop in her cell. <laughs> yeah, I'll just stay here for a um, says. See how much abuse I get later. <laughs> right. I'll be fine, it won't hurt me. Yeah, no, I thought you'd not hear it. I'll pass right. it on. It's okay, I'll pass it on. It'll be fine. Oh, there's a boot full of stuff in that car. Drop from Copper. Oh, Copper says, You're going, Brian. No, I'm not going. I'm staying here. I'm fine. It'll all be good. Terry Glencove wants to know Terry, will you have the badge on your hospital gown? Yes. Of course he will. I've requested it. He wears it everywhere. It's on a Velcro patch now. He just. Every new piece of clothing you have to get has to have a to get a velcro. Gonna get well you get it you don't have to sew it in your skin, Terry. You could get a tattoo. Tattoo. You know, it would be there permanently then, you know. I call it the bad. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> then I'll have to turn my no clothes on. Did we say that Lewis was in, by the way? We did, yes. Okay. Doug Miller should have to go and help. I'll be back in two seconds.
So what finish are you going to put on this then, Terry? Uh, I was thinking I might put Danish oil on it, but I don't know. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. I reckon. Think that would be all right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking was looking at last time you stopped it. Make sure there's no tool marks there. You want to get a blast from the past to like, oh. I'm back. Start. Michelle said thanks very much, Brian. I'm starting to wane, people. I'm going to have to sit down in a minute. Uh, that's all right. Just, Do you take so your time? See if I get this sound in then. There we go. Pull the chair up and sand, stick them down. Yeah, pull the chair over. Sit down and sand. No. So it was too late when I went out to help Michelle. She was just bringing in the last bag of shopping, so I missed it. So so she said, joined us. So she said, she said, thank uh, you very much. I said, what are you doing being late? That's ridiculous. Oh. As long as you have a badge that says this way up. <laughs> yeah. They're very careful these days in hospitals. All right, I'm going to sign this up to 400. I'm going to oily, oily, oily it. You're oiling this. Oh. Yeah, a bit Danish, I think. Dr. Bob's in. Hi, Bob. Oh, oh hi, Bob. Dr. Bob. Oh. Uh, Brian, uh, why is asking? Would Danish uh, or some other oil? be likely to reduce cracking uh, with a not a fully seasoned timber as opposed yeah. to using wax well it probably no. would i mean I this, is well, this is well seasoned this bit so now he's talking about a with a partially not seasoned. Seasoned, partially seasoned it wouldn't right. oil, won't, it, oil won't reduce the the movement no the it won't hold it back no but oil or wax will slow down the drying. Okay. So either one will help. Mm -hmm. Possibly. I think wax would probably help more because it's more airtight. Yeah. Yeah, wax, wax is a coating rather than something sinking into the wood. It's much oil, I suppose. Yeah. Lewis, Lewis is on, agrees with me. Oil does not prevent cracking. Ask me how I know. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't. It definitely doesn't. I oiled a piece of uh, magnolia, uh, and it just it cracked just as it? much as it was going to crack anyway. It almost turned itself inside out. Didn't it? Stephen's doing sweet cherry today. He says we need a workshop aroma hashtag. Ah, uh, nice. Oops. Look at that, that, that's to make the tenon a bit more, it's a bit bigger now. So I hit it with a sanding disc, which I shouldn't have done. Trying to stand up, do things that I can't do, but I'm like, oh. Right, this Sorry, is going to be sit a, down for 20 minutes. I'll, yeah. do, I'll do the outside of my bowl, and you can come back and put the finish on for us. I'll just put this edge on when I've got it. Sharpened up your little dovetail. That's it, team. I had to <laughs> sit down, mate. <sighs> so three dots on me. Hang on, I've got to change glasses a minute. Can't see anything. Well, it's just that was my clue. Richard, if you want to say good afternoon, Richard. Any any red cedar, Richard? Fancy tunneling a bit now that I've seen that bit. <laughs> uh, I can't do that. I've got to bring you all back in first. 
on the air. It says here. Okay. Pull back. Wait, all we'll... There we go. So people, my back's killing me now, and uh, I'm going to let Pete have a little go, and uh, we'll see what happens. And I'm an earworm now. Cool. Right, so I've got this piece of olive. So I don't want to finish this on a live because it's too nice. It's only little. It's, um, <coughs> it's six inches by Bye. two inches. And all I've done is put a 35 mil Forstner into here. Would you go on to my lovely O'Donnell jaws? Oh, here we go again. <laughs> you got a set of those, Brian? Oh. Well done. Are they on oh, an SK-114? Terry, have you got a set of those? Are they on an SK-114? They are. Yeah. Oh, I've got Shock. just the same set. Oh, I'm shocked and surprised. Check my keyboard on the windowsill. Terry, do you have a set of those? I do, I do, Mark. Yeah, and they're attached yeah. to uh, Axe, Mr. Chuck, as well. Are they? Yeah. Oh. I believe I do. Let me just turn around. Oh, oh there they are. Yes, on the wall. Check. No, there they are. Brian, do you have one? Um, what? The, the SK-114. Oh, we sorry. Know. I wasn't listening to you at all there. So it's going to be somewhere yours. else. Are you? No, I don't own an SK-114. And I got an email from Axe Master this morning. Oh. Advertising what? Uh, SK-1 SK-1 well, because it's a good product. They don't really need to advertise. They advertise themselves, really. Yeah. They do. No, well, they do, yeah. well, they obviously do need to advertise because they keep sending me emails about it. Because they know you need them. Oh, well, look, it says, I experienced the evolution SK-114 Chuck engineering at its best. And it gives yeah. you the whole history of how they invented the four-way scroll Chuck. Yeah. And then they tell you the price at the end, and it scares the living daylights out of me. Copper, copper, what's that? Right, take a hint. Take a hint. <laughs> take a hint. I can't afford it. I could tell me. Well, I, I know for a fact that Pete and I both got the Axe Mister Super Precision Chuck, which came yeah. out in, I think, 1987. I bought mine in 1989, and it's still going perfect today. Two hundred. Yeah, mine's second hand. I, I got it. Early 2000s, so yeah, mine's quite an old one. Is the price of that chuck today? This this very day, because it says here <laughs> add the basket. Two hundred seventy nine pounds ninety eight, and that's without the O'Donnell Jaws. Click the button, Brian. No, we'll all, we'll all club together and get you the O'Donnell Jaws if you click no. the button. I'm not clicking the button. Yeah, they'll probably be at the Hurricane, you know. Yeah, they will. I don't care. You might be able to. Knock them down a bit there, and I get a show get a show uh, discount. Do you mind measuring stick yet again? Getting quite fond of that now, actually. Yeah. What do you want? Make them and pass them out. Yeah, you could make them and then not give one to me. <laughs> you, could, you could make one and not give it to me because they're so designed for an SK one one four. It's no use to me at all. Um, they're not actually. Oh, okay. Um, so all I've done is that's 70 mil, 40 mil, oh. 105 mil, and 50 mil, which just happens to be the size of the, my main jaws. Um, yeah. These are actually 35 mil, so I just go slightly under on the 40 mil one. So pretty universal, really. Hmm, interesting. You want to think about that, Brian? It's all your different sets of jaws. Yeah, five minutes on a bandsaw and you've got it. Oh, is that a plate we have to tell me to make my own? Yeah. Fair enough. Well, you won't That's get it fine. delivered to you if it's anything like Mark's bloody depth gauges. Well, I can't, I can't do the export tax to third world countries, so... Heard yeah, I want to. I want to make stuff. Says Brian, by the one I emailed you about. Yep, I would have. Only they didn't have one in the correct size. And Stephen yeah, would do says, He says there, and he paid under ninety nine for his. I take it he means it's uh, SK one one four. 
They've really metal. gone up in price. Price of metal, I think, now. Stainless steel, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's gone through the roof. The, uh, the Axminster eBay store is selling off um, SK-114s. Yeah, but uh, only for... A, disc a discounted sizes. price. But, the yeah, it's, it's the odd sort of spindle sizes that are left. There are no M33 3.5s left. What shape am I going to go with this? Give in. Yeah, any, any shape you like. Yeah. It's not trumpet shape. No. Do you want OG, OG yeah. shape? OG shape or round? Or, you know, curve. Don't, OG Too is small so for OG. And, and OG is so much 1970s. It is, really. Yep. It is, but it's nice, though. It's still nice. I don't care it's what still you nice, but it's still nice. Yeah. On a, on a big, thinnish one, it works well, but not on this one. I think OGs work better on bigger platters. Yeah. Yeah. 16, 18, 20 inch platter. Nice, r r nice round rolled over top so that, you know, you've got a lip on the. She's fried up in. No, I mean, you know, roll oh, it that, over. Oh, yeah, no. no so oh, look, I've just looked up there. Oh. So it comes <gasps> back in again? Yeah, coming back in what? again. What? It's nice ships for that size. Yeah. All right, that's it. I have to go and remortgage my house. You ordered one? What's that? He's ordered one. No, I'm two seven nine ninety nine plus one three nine ninety eight plus postage because I can't buy it direct from the UK. I'll have to buy it from a uh, uh, Southern Store in Ireland mm -hmm. if I want it. Right. It's an arm and a leg. That's what it is. Well, if you want the best, you've got to pay the best. <laughs> It'll improve the standard of your turning, no end. No, oh, won't. absolutely. No, won't. Actually, Brian, you're well, quite enough one. You're right, I can't, it's over 500 quid. That's a yeah, good idea, Ruby. You can't have one because we've got nothing to take the piss out of. Yeah, Ru Ruby's got a, Ruby, Ruby's kind of the good idea. At the show, she makes cedar eggs, <coughs> puts them into, into woolens to keep the moths away. Oh. Yes. Good tip if you've got any woolens, people. <coughs> Dr. Bob, Stephen's Dr. Bob, suggesting, is Stephen's suggesting get a big size and use an adapter, might be a go. The only problem with those adapters is it pushes the chuck away. further away from the bearings on the headstock. It does. The idea of the compact chuck of the SK114 being so compact is to keep it close to the bearings. That's the idea. So you don't want to be pushing it all further away. It's the wrong tool. That's the better one. You can tell that right away. What's that smelling like, Pete? Olive oil. Um. Tapas bar. It's not an overly wow. pleasant. It's, it's um. Tapas bar. Not nasty. It's just not the best smelling wood. But it smells of olives, basically. I always think olives. Olive wood's lovely to turn. Cheers, <laughs> French stuff, Mrs. Brown. If even I can afford the O'Donnell, you, you can definitely be able to afford one. Yeah, right enough. I'm a pensioner. Stop it. What would we talk about if we didn't? Brian had one of those, eh? No, you should find something else. Yeah, I was going to find something. <laughs> something like that, Terry. Mm. Obviously, better shape than that, but. Yeah, better shape than that, but yeah. That's it. So, this is very sticky, but it was completely waxed. It's gumming up my oh. tool, something terrible. Nice timber, mind. Is that fully dry? Uh, yeah, it should be. It's, um, it's a blank I bought. I don't buy that many. When we were up at Snaton's, I bought it up there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. 
That was That's why November. I don't want to finish it on a live because it's um because I'm a type bugger and I don't buy prep blanks very often. Yeah, you want to make sure you get it exactly as you want it, don't you? Not just a demo piece. <laughs> Uh, Stephen, Stephen, Stephen. What's he saying? Couldn't turn a wonky candle stick, would it? So Dr. Bob says he used to do the uh, same thing as Ruby did with the Canadian cheetah before Trump banned the import of it. Well, I really want to ban the import of the <laughs> God, this is Trump we're talking about. Why did you do anything? Um, it's now Why starting to be become, in become available. Now it comes from British Columbia. Why would it even be in his mind? So we got more important know. things to think about. Well, I mean, cedar is um, got to be licensed to imports into the UK. You can bring anything you like when it's finished. A piece of uh, turned or worked mm. cedar, but raw cedar has got to be licensed in. Just to the price of it. I'll just have to plant some then, won't I? And grow it. Mm. Somebody else can get the benefit of turning it in years to come. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's all like disease control, isn't it? Red cedar trees. Let's have a quick look on YouTube. See, can I find any? I mean, we've got. It's a garden tree over here, mostly. Don't think it grows wild in, in, in nature, no. but we've got a lot of cedar growing in parks and gardens. Is it called Western Red Cedar by any chance? Uh, the right title for it, Western yeah, Red Cedar. Yeah. Oh, you can buy no bother. Remember, somebody once made a whole wanted a whole lot of fence panels made out of it. Posh ones, improved. <coughs> Eastern Red Cedar. Took me ages. Never rots, you see. The bugs going in or anything. Quite proper uh, sticky in a bit. So Western red cedar is used a lot for hedges. So small. Apparently. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a big tree. Or is it just a small tree? I know cedars grew like 200 for inch of it high. Red well, this is a postage piece, which is supposedly fully seasoned. Um, okay, not well. I think it was so heavily waxed that it's never dried. Uh, Look at that. Yeah. It's certainly clogging up your sandpaper. Yeah. The uh, rest of red cedar, or the rest of the red cedar, is, is really not a cedar. It's actually a juniper. According to this... Uh, Sid's Repurvance says that he's got some Western Red Cedar in his shed. He hasn't turned yet. Mm, look at you. Malcolm McCune says you get yellow cedar here as well. Mm. I think a little more uh, research is required there. Mm. It can grow between 12 and 24 inches a year. Right. If you get a mature cedar tree, and it's like an oak, it has massive branches that uh, go out a long way. Very pretty to look at. But those branches themselves will go 14, 18 inches diameter. Brian with the wise says it's possible the oil in the olive. He's making the Yeah, it could be oil. Hey, Michelle, Michelle, who speaks in? Oh, no, hey, Michelle. Have you got that shopping put away yet? Yeah, oh. hurry up. 
We told Brian to come and help you, but he said, nah, she can do it on, do it by you herself. Her own, yeah. yeah, do it on her own, he said. Yeah, everybody in the chat said, Brian, go and help. Don't be miserable. But he said, nah, he I can't be said, bothered. Nah, I can't be bothered. We did say yeah. he could have done the chopping himself, but he said, no. Any second now, we're going to hear him. Yeah, he said I was going to go shoving with Michelle today, but she didn't want me to. I did the peace and quiet, probably. So, uh, Cedar is related to... Uh... Cedar. Cedar. Juniper trees. It's a, no, juniper trees. Is it now? It is. Ever, evergreen, isn't it? Yeah. Gerald the French Turner says, sorry, he's got to go. He's got to help the missus with the shopping. See, Brian, some of us Bye, are. Jared. Bye, Gerard. Bye, Gerard. Good that's man, Gerard. That's the sign of a good man. Yeah, good husband there. <laughs> You guys have bored me. Put me Brian, it's here. nice to know who your friends are. Isn't it? Friends like you guys who need enemies, has, that's all. When I he has some, here. he'll he'll let you know who they are. Yeah. Well when I find a friend, I'll let you know. Oh dear. <sighs> Richard has some cedar. Uh -huh. you, you don't know which variety it is. Is it red? Is it, does it look like red cedar? <laughs> yeah, cut it open. If it's red, chances are it's red cedar. Red cedar. You may have to send me a couple of bits of that, Richard. Well, let's try it. It's all worth uh, working with. Mm. My workshop roof is uh, cedar shingles. Um, and that's gone silver over the years. So Lewis is trying to peek at the chat whilst he's working. He says, if I've missed anybody, I apologize. No, they're all here. Everybody wonder where you were, Lewis. Richard says it's more of a yellow color. I'll be sap with them, will it? Yellow cedar. Oh, no, or it could be yellow cedar. Uh, what? Yeah. Yellow cedar? Who said that? Yeah. Well, nobody mentioned yellow cedar. White cedar then. Well, Juniperus virginiana, also known as red cedar, eastern cedar, red cedar, Virginian juniper, eastern juniper, red juniper, and other local names, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. It's native to eastern North America and southeastern Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. And east of the Great Plains. Stephen the Wood Dude says the best color, the best cedar trees he's ever seen is in Cedar National Park, California, and Oregon. There you are, Far better than the look of olive is the feel of it. Yeah. Nice, isn't it? Take that light off it a minute. Right, I think I'll have another go if I. All right, Pete. Yep. Not to bring you all back. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to squirt a bit of maths over this just so people okay. can see it. Yep. All right. Looks like some nice green on it. Look at that. Beauty. Look at that. Beautiful. That is going to shine up absolutely. So that's going to be uh, yeah. finished off carefully. That's the sun is 240 at the moment. Um, shame about the shape, mind you. <laughs> well, the shape I think will work. Yeah. We'll see when we right. finish it. Right. Unwinding. Over to you, Terry. There you go. Let's, uh, Back to Terry. Yeah, I've got to find out how to do this again. Right, click on there. There's three buttons at the top. There you go, Luke. And go to there. Put yourself back on full screen again. Yay! Right. Just got a mark on here somewhere. I've just got to uh, sand that a bit. You, Terry. Back team turning with Terry. Yeah. Turning with Terry on Monday ish. Apparently, uh, the wood dude says all cedars that grow west of the Rockies are red and the rest are yellow. Atlantic cedar. 
I proper glasses would, would be good. Yeah. There you go. We've got a, an arboretum near us, Western Butt Arboretum, where they grow a selection of trees that don't grow in the UK every year to see if the climate change is uh, suitable to them. Michael McCune suggests you will know if it's yellow cedar when you start to turn it. It has a very distinct aroma, and mm. unlike red cedar, it's not pleasant. Oh, right. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, oh. Richard, you turn a bit and tell you and see what the, the smells like. And <laughs> if it yeah. smells rotten, just keep it. If it's too toxic. <laughs> it's too toxic. Give it to. Uh, Sidri Burpsing has uh, suggested that all those holidays you take is bad for your back. So all that uh, lying about in the sun does his back in. And on that subject, Terry's on holiday next week, so I'm covering. Yeah. Are you covering next week again? Yeah, Terry's I, been on holiday again. Just, oh, yeah. The Danish oil. I don't know what's I, happening I, at all. I hate to say this, but I'm on holiday next week as well. Where are you going? Next Monday. Well, where are you going? We're going away yeah. for the weekend. We don't come back till Tuesday. Oh, are you? Wow. Just like that? Yeah. Oh, I see. I don't remember signing your permission slip. Uh, no, uh, I haven't <laughs> seen it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not in my diary. I don't know what's going on there. Going to Stratford on Avon for a few days. Yeah. All right. Yes, above your station now, Mr. Beckett. I'm on tonight, yes. yes. Did you know? Did you know? like, you like that, uh, Mark? Stratford on Avon is nice. Yeah, I've been before, Kim hasn't. Oh, yeah. So, Brian, you on tonight? No, oh, I'm on tonight. You link in then, Brian. Would that be about eight o'clock ish? Just like that. Just uh, right around about eight o'clock ish. Just you know, you know, you know me. I'm usually on time. Oh. Ish. 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 You so wish. We wish. Uh, I think I'll turn a, uh, a small item this evening. I will be turning two actually. See how it goes. That beautiful. That beautiful. Nice. Isn't it? Gorgeous. It's very red. On on one of my screens, it's very, very red. On the other screen, it just looks Even like... Uh, looks natural on... I don't know what's wrong with the two screens I've got. Something's Shit. funny going on there. Richard says it doesn't smell that bad. Hmm... Oh. I feel I'm being set up here. Yeah. You have it, Broy. Yeah, I'll have a go. Well, you're, checking your check you're checking your Shakespeare quotes on your uh, return. I do actually have a degree in English literature. I studied Shakespeare extensively. Extensively. Well, because I had to, though. Because you had to? Yeah, not because I wanted to. Yeah. I was like, I was thinking that hard work. Hmm. This could. So this Dr. Cove Woodworks has said, "Do you need a slightly deeper mortise at the bottom due to the softer wood?" Probably. Yeah, We're my tendency is go a little bit deeper <laughs> on soft wood. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. If he hasn't gone deep enough, we're about to find out. It's right. I'm gonna. Oh, look at that last bit. <coughs> there we go. It's running fairly true. Just over a thousand revs, so it's weighty in it because of the sapwood and the hardwood. Never mind. Right, I should do. Let's see if I can't ruin this. Where can be cute and He's got a massive red cedar in his backyard. Ooh. It's quite worrisome in windstorms. Where's my ball gouge gone now? I would be stopping to worry and I would be... Uh, I just make sure it falls somewhere so you can uh, harvest it. I would be turning it into ball blanks. Yeah. Just pollard it, bring it down and pollard it a bit. Let's pull the elbow stammer back out of the way, but it's going to use, use all the magic. Get me out. A little bit of height.
Everybody see the good news at the weekend? Go on. Okay, what good news? Well, it looks like Mr. Ed Oliver is going to be coming back to doing lives. Oh, oh, Saturday, on a Saturday morning, is he? Then he hasn't said when, that oh. time, what format. But he was very much yeah, hinting towards it with getting all his equipment back updated and Update? Yeah, he's getting his equipment updated. He's got the no, all, all the software updates. All the software updates. Okay. I was going to say, he has a big fancy mixing desk and everything. There's not in there somewhere. Yeah, we have the same kind of laws, Michael. Michael says there's very strict laws in regarding tree removal. Yeah, we have yeah. the same kind of issues here too. But not so much where I live, but in the cities and stuff there. Maybe so too, I have to say. Yeah. That's why I have plant trees. Try and make up for it. Red cedar trees are very good at making windbreaks, apparently. I have an ideal spot for a set of windbreaks. Just need a fast set of fast growing trees that could be turned later. Might want to go a wide brim and keep that knot as it is. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to shave the knot off. So it's coming out this side as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I fall out then. Just tidy it up at that point, but um, yeah. leave it that sick. I would. Oh, Jared's back. Welcome back, Jared. Words of wisdom from Jared as well. Take note, Brian. Yeah. Gerard says, I am back, Brian. I am back. It did not yeah, take no. long, but it does it help us a long way, Brian. You should yeah, try sometimes. Gerard's talking to boy in the <laughs> It doesn't taste very nice in coffee. Just saying. What's that? <laughs> yeah, Michael well, says he had the. It doesn't taste good in coffee. Yeah, Michael says he had the city send out an arborist to check the cedar. He said it was very healthy. And however, the city wouldn't give him a letter to that effect for the insurance purposes. Mm. I'm sure they wouldn't. They're good at that. Oh, messing about there, boys. They're lovely cuts, Terry. Pardon? Hey, a nice shine off of that cut. Mm. Yep. Level rubbing. Yes, indeed. I'm waiting for it to blow up, actually. Isn't it? No, that won't. That's safe. That'd be right. <laughs> Michelle says that all the goodies are put away. I have to go searching for them. Yeah. Michelle, oh, you don't deserve any goodies. It's not that big, guys. I'll find them. Okay. I'm getting near the bottom now, I think. Yeah. Remember, I've got a mortise in it. Yeah, there's been enough funnels of late. 
Jeez, death catch. Oh, sorry. Oh, he has got one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just rub it in there, Mark. I would if I was you. It would be nice to have one, but... I don't know. I've got one, Terry, did I say? you got two. you got one from Ben. I did, yeah, that's true. Right, the boy says you're on the big screen now. It's lunchtime. Good. And his wife is watching as well. She loves it. Everybody likes the Hobbit. Guess what's just arrived at my door? Don't know. Hot coffee. coffee. A fresh hot coffee. Thank you, darling. Oh, hot coffee. At least I want it far too nice to you. I know. Yeah, right, the boy says, yeah, she's a hobbit too. <laughs> she's a hobbit too. But she, everybody is compared to Pete. Getting a little bit of deflection on, this, on the side of that bowl now, are you? Hey? Eh? Getting a bit of deflection on that bowl. Yeah, moving a bit. A bit of vibration there. It's a wide grain, I expect. Mm. If that's what it sounds like. No, Roy, you'll be saving the Doom Bar up for this evening. Dr. Bog says. Why do only half the people watching give our master Turner a thumbs up? I I, I don't understand that. There's 50 people watching now, and there's only 20 like me thumbs up. Probably. They're all intimidated by the badge. That's what it is. That's what it have is. A, have a go there, guys. Have a, have a quick click at that thumbs up button. Give Terry a bit of support. Better go slow in the middle because it's spinning not slower. It's actually spinning the same speed, but the travel across is less. The rate of feed of wood over the cutting point is slower than it yeah. was at the run. I can hear it again. The only thin, speed that matters when you're turning is proportional speed. Okay. Speed of the lathe doesn't really matter. Speed of the tool doesn't really matter. It's how you move one against the other. Yep. The wood that says, explosions usually happen when the sap wood meets the hardwood. It does. But always look out for surprise attacks. <laughs> we love cedar. Yeah. Might have to take a little bit more off there. Uh, Louis says, cedar is bad for that. Yeah, I know it is. Oh. <laughs> Richard Thielen right. has got a nice piece of cherry on the lathe. 285 by 70 mil. Wow. Cool. 285 is how many. This is first going to go bang if anywhere. Eight, nine, ten inches by three. Ten inches, inches roughly. Out. Michael McEwen's asking, what's the what's the average height 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 of a hobbit? Terry's height. Yeah, Terry's on average hobbit height. Twenty-five is just over eleven inches. Five foot nine, I am. Is it eleven inches? Okay, there you go. Yeah, of course, because that's the one. So it's 11 by 3. 75 mil is 3 inches, of course, isn't it? Yeah. So that's got it. 11 by 2 and 3 quarters ish. That's better. Mm -hmm. Thought it was going to go bang on that knot, but it didn't. 
bit of tear out there. That's because of the white grain, but that may sand out. If it don't, wow. Well, well, it's quite white grain. It's probably soft anyway, so. Demonstration piece in it, so. It should sand. It should sand. Let's have a look. Problem with that white grain, have you got a big white? Sanding arbor. 12 grit. That'll do. 12 grit. <laughs> That's one, up from, that's one step up from my gauge, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody watch Formula One yesterday? I don't know what shape was that. I don't know what shape was that. Got bored and stopped. It was all a bit funny in the beginning when it rained. I've done that circuit at 3 o'clock in the morning on a bike with very loud pipes on it. You said that? I did. Oh, As I went past the uh, the waterfront part, uh -huh. there's a restaurant with a balcony and a lot of people partying up there. Give me a loud cheer as I went past. So I did it again. So you went all the way around and did it again? Yep. Good for you, Pete. And, and then I rode up the hill into France because I couldn't afford to stay in Monaco. Yeah, well, who can? Chris says you guys won't have to worry about metric if Boris gets his way. We don't worry about metric now. No. Yeah, exactly. We still don't worry about metric, do we? Yeah. Yeah. It's um, stuff and lots of it. It's all right for us all guys. Changing just causes lots and lots of uh, sign makers it's and... Various other people to make lots of money. It's a diversion tactic anyway. Yeah. Yep. It's exactly what that is. Oh, look at me. I'm doing something great. While well, something really bad happens over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just leave it alone. Though. Just leave it the way it is. It'll be fine. Yeah, I'm quite happy buying yes. 3.6 yeah. metres of 2 before's. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm it. Perfectly happy. I'm perfectly happy doing that as well. 3.6 lengths of inch by inch. It's all very simple. Just leave it alone. Stop faffing about with it. It's a bit like changing the clocks. You just need to start leaving that alone, Dave. <laughs> Don't why, get me started. Why do anymore. they change the clocks anyway? I feel, I feel a rant coming on. Isn't it for the, for the Early morning workers, or the school, or something—I can't remember now. It was, it was, it was apparently at one time it was the uh, to do with the farmers. All right. Yeah, now they work twenty-four-seven anyway. Yeah, exactly. Oh, what's the spotlight? Now they feel like my GPS. Now, now they've all got big, big headlights and stuff on their tractors. They don't, they don't yeah. matter what time it is. And, and they, they work day and night anyway. So when the grass season starts, which is just about due in this country. Is it right? Cutting okay. silage, um, they will be flat out all day, every day. And it night. Won't matter what time it is. And night or just today. And, and as for children having to walk to school, sh show me the kids that walk to school. That's what I want to know. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen many of those about you. They're all riding to school in their Chelsea tractors. Now, Roy, the boys asked, are you going to keep that knot, Terry? Yeah, that's a plan, yeah. Roy. What? Well, Still trying to keep it anyway. Keeping that knot. Yeah, keeping the knot in. Should be alright. I'm trying not to sand through the bottom of this. Oh, well, you didn't cut it that thing. No, no, that's not that's not a becket. You have to reverse mount it first all and then right. sand through the bottom for it to be a becket. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> You'd just be an ordinary funnel if you do it now. Because if you reverse mount it and then do it... Oh, that's yeah, right. Okay. That's a bad it. Yeah, take a tenon off. Yep. Can't wait to the first time I do that with a vacuum, Chuck. That'll be <laughs> yeah. fun. Yeah, that would be, be great, wouldn't it? That would be amazing, Mark. Yeah. You could do that. As the bowl departs through the light of suction. What are we on now? Is that there? 120. 180. 
Got from Glen Cove. It says lovely grain. I love it too. I think it's nice. Stand out really well when we get some oil on it. Yeah. Or whatever we're putting on the inside. Yeah, we I'll put oil on it. I'll be, give it four or five coats, but I'll just put one today. Yeah, one today. Let me dry. Build it up till it's shiny, or just leave it kind of matte. Oh, half and half. I think you're not. It just not uh, brilliantly shiny. Uh, the grain does the work. You don't need to do so much more to that. That's it. Yeah, the yep. grain does all the work, doesn't it? Right, that's done. 240 next. Right, the boys says, I've seen farmers uh, around here turning grass. Yep, there will be. Uh, you guys in South of England get it a little bit earlier than we do over here. Uh, Roy is using Danish oil. Good old Danish oil. Which Danish brand oil is from... it, Mary? Eh? Which brand right. Danish oil? It's uh, chestnut. Chestnut products. Chestnuts. I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> nice one then. 400. Oh. God. Didn't look like you okay, Gary? Eh? Yeah, I'm starting to suffer a bit, but... I'll be all right. I just struggled through this last piece. If I can find some 400 grip sand. Well, you've done your hour, mate. So if you get some oil on that, so we can see it. Yeah, you're good. Just, I'll finish this sanding bit, though. I just want to get 400 oh, on Oh, yeah. That'll be um, an English Danish oil, which is different to an American Danish oil. Yes, Lewis. Red cedar. The Danish oil is a mixture of tongue oil and other vegetable oils and the chemicals to quicken the drying process. Yeah, um, a lot of the American ones aren't, aren't tongue, they're um, linseed. Yeah. So presumably linseed is a common crop over there. Here we are. Oh, just turn this noise off over here. Oh. Danish oil. Actually, it's so not it's chestnut. Barrett. It's Barrett. Barrett. I yeah. knew it wasn't chestnut. No, it's Maritime. Because yeah, chestnut oil oh, there is Danish. I remember Barrett. I run out, run out of Barrett. their oil and then I bought this. Who is Barate? Barate make creosote as well. I could put that on it, I suppose. They make general finishes, don't they? They do. But, uh, as long as it's kept in an airtight container and stable conditions, it should be alright for years. Yeah. Bruce said we turned truckloads of Western Red for deck railings. Alright. There you are. Yeah, I know people have red cedar decks out here all the decks very, very expensive he says yeah it is it's got to be kept in an airtight container out yeah. of direct sunlight out of extreme oh, temperature changes the danish oil we're talking yeah, about yeah you're gonna leave it for a long yeah. time yeah no, i just it just goes hard yeah if you expose it to the air i use a lot of it i, I buy it by the half gallon mm -hmm. it's um One of my favourites. So Quick and yeah. easy. So there's an American explanation of Danish oil. Say Danish oil is mainly made from blending linseed oil, tongue oil, with mineral spirits. The spirits a bit that helps it dry. Yeah. Yeah, in the UK, it's almost always tongue. Um, mm -hmm. What is it? global market and everything these days so you've got to read the instructions but yeah um that's it i've got got it all almost got it all let's gas the lab tongue oil used to be used to um waterproof chinese um seagoing ships yep yeah 
And it's also used on the paper umbrellas they use okay. to make them waterproof. More proof. Yep. Tongue oil or Chinese or China wood oil is obtained by pressing the seeds of the nut from a tongue tree. Right, color and that's amazing, today. Terry. Eh? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. What's the painting balls that weren't as red as that? Yeah. Yep. There we go, Gene. Much is his chair. As the screen says, like it, subscribe, comment, share. Share. Not too bad, is it, really? All right. That's Excellent, really nice, mate. Terry. It's a lovely, Very nice. lovely bit of work, buddy. Yeah. Uh, that knot sets it off as well. I was right by the edge, really, where the knot was going to come. 10 pound feature. 10 pound feature. 10 pound feature. <laughs> so at least the town is worth. At least. <laughs> well, there we are, people. Oh, was that, I, I was that absorbed in watching that. I haven't even drank all my tea. Put my other glass down so I can see the screen. Ooh, there you are. Right. So not only did you not help Michelle with the shopping, no. you, drink, you didn't drink the tea she made you? No. She didn't make tea, I made tea himself. Oh, Waste right. Of rations. Waste of rations. Total rations. See, my wife right. brings me a hot, nice hot coffee halfway through, so... I've noticed yeah. that. I noticed that mine's... I noticed that Michelle has stopped bringing me coffee when I'm live and stuff. I've noticed that. Yes. Yeah. So if I'm down here working, Pete, and then Kim's upstairs, if she says she brings me a coffee... Yeah, yeah. So, uh, there's no tea. I help her with the shopping. No tea and chocolate in the bin anymore. My wife brings me coffee, uh, tea, a cup of tea and biscuits. Do you help always... Ruth with the shopping? I'll go with her every time. Yeah, yeah. There's a we'll pattern. Go shopping to together. We love it. You know, shopping together, doing things. None of us are miserable like some people. No Wake me up when you're done. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> thank you, everybody. I'm uh, sorry I struggled there, but Pete helped out. It did give me a respite, which is good. I won't be here next week, of course, as you know. We know. Um, yeah. Sorry, we'll cover for you again. It's fine. So you may or may not yeah. see me for on and off for a while. Depends on how this operation goes and when I get it. Till then, thanks for joining me. And the holidays me. you've got booked. And now I've got several of these booked as well. Yeah. Um, Only so one it's goodbye. Or two. It's goodbye from Pete. Cheers, everyone. I'm Brian. Okay, goodbye, everybody. And it's goodbye from Mark. Bye, everyone. Don't forget, Brian's on tonight, 8 o'clock. His link's probably right. been in. It, it and is. Mark is on at 1 o'clock on Wednesday. And 1 o'clock Wednesday. Be somewhere every, else. Every Wednesday. Every, every Wednesday. Yeah. Come and have a laugh. Come and have a laugh. And I'll see you and my colleagues later. Bye.